This is my Nerf Sten Blaster tutorial. This video will be split into five parts. First part being what tools you need. Second part, prep. Third part, the plunger, then the grip, and then the barrel assembly. Okay, let's get started. Here's some stuff you need. So, pliers and flush cutters. They're always useful and nice for the filament pins. PVC cutters to cut the PVC. Pipe cutters to cut the brass. Tape to secure the brass or PVC. Super glue. Grease for the O-rings. And various amounts of drill bits. I also highly recommend clamps. You also need M3 and M4 Allen wrenches. Okay, now for the prep. So first, cut your PVC to length. I use a chop saw. All the lengths and hardware you'll need to get is in the uh, Thingiverse description. So, uh, once you cut your brass and your PVC, you'll need to attach your drill guide and drill it. So you, you may use a drill, but I recommend using a drill press so the holes are straight. So first, grab the largest drill guide and use your clamps to clamp it on there. As you can see, I already drilled my holes. This is prep after all. So drill your holes slowly. And then for the second drill guide, put it so the holes are on the same sides of the first one. There we go. So holes are on the same side. These three holes will be where you attach your grip. The top holes are where the iron sights would go. Yeah. A nifty trick to line your holes is to draw a nice long line and then have both holes uh, on the line. So that will line them really well. Now for the brass. Once you cut your brass, you'll have four and a half inch 1732 brass, one and a half inch of 1732 brass, and six inches of nine and sixteenth brass. It is very important that they still fit together after you cut them. What pipe ten pipe cutters tend to do is that it uh it makes them not fit together. So you'll need to flare them with a pair of pliers. So yeah, so before you flare, uh make sure one end could go into the 9 and 16th brass. And you may flare one side of the 1732 brass and one side of the 9 and 16th brass. Because once it's flared, they'll not be able to go into each other again. But just flare just enough so you could put them in. For the smallest piece, I'd recommend just flaring it so that it's not flared out, but just back to normal. So this could fit completely into the 9 and 16th brass. And now for the plunger assembly. You'll need your plunger, an o-ring, plunger rod, catch, and the rainbow housing. Okay, let's begin. So first, Grab three M3 by 30 millimeter screws. These are quite long. Next, grab three square nuts, only square nuts. And then what we are going to do is put the square nuts into the printed parts. So grab the plunger rod and the catch and put the square nuts into it. Make sure they're all the way down. So you can see through the holes of the nuts. These nuts do have to be tight. You can grab a screwdriver, press fit, and if not, you can hammer it down. Okay, next up, once you got square nuts in here with the holes going straight through, grab a M3 by 30 millimeter screw 
And this small piece looks like a cap and thread this screw all the way through. Once you got that, you got the M3 by 30 screw into this plastic nut. You could uh, put it and screw it onto one end of the rod. You can see I just screwed it in, make sure it's bottoming out. Okay, next, put your plunger on top. Shouldn't be such a tight fit. And grab a screw and put it through the plunger. Make sure to hold this down and it's not getting pushed down as it's screwed in. Now screw it until it's flush. You may also use foam if you want to pad the plunger. Okay, next step, grab your o-ring, slap it on. I'm not sure exactly what size this is, but just have it fit into your PVC. Make sure it's pretty tight fit. If it's barely too big and it's not coming, going in, grease will help force it in. If you're worried about the plunger and the O-ring being too tight, the K26 should be able to push just about anything. And it'll give you a nicer seal. So, next step is to attach the cap to the screw. You'll need to glue this. Get in for this to dry from the super glue. Grab your one inch PVC, put it over, and glue it. This is so that the spring uh, is guided because the K26 fits into one inch PVC perfectly. And it'll help it stop it from kinking. Wait for your plunger to dry. Grab your one and a quarter inch PVC. Uh, the first part of the foregrip. And you should still have your rainbow housing, your catch with the square nut in it, and the M3 by 30 millimeter screw. I would add a washer to the end here to help hold the spring for the catch for later on. And also grab two M4 by 20 millimeter screws along with two hex nuts. So first, grab the rainbow housing and the catch and make sure these large holes are facing up. Now put your catch in so that the square nut is in the bottom half and put it in the rainbow housing. Make sure these two parts slide freely together. Next, have your PVC with the large holes up and put it in. Okay, once you got that, just screw it in with M4 by 20 millimeter screws. Just screw it enough so that it barely pokes out these two holes. Okay, so now once you have the screws barely poking out right here in your uh, housing inside, grab your last M3 by 30 millimeter screw with the washer on it and your catch spring, which is just a normal pen spring. Put the spring inside the screw and then screw it in to the middle hole. This middle hole uh, should not, should allow the screws to move freely. It should move the catch up and down. So next step, grab your first part of the foregrip and your two hex nuts. Right here. Now, put the first hex nut into this slot. Like that. You might have to pound it in or push it in. And then the second hex nut will go under the trigger guard. You can see a slot for the nut. Once you do that, uh, we'll put on the grips, such as the foregrip and the normal grip. Grab your grip, put it on there. Your foregrip, also put that on there. And grab these two plastic screws. Now, what you wanna do, this one with the 
with a thing on the top goes into the main foregrip. This one with no ends go into the grip. These screws are also chamfered to help you put them in. And I recommend once you got them part way in, you can use the clamp to squeeze them into it. You grab your aesthetic piece, glue it right here. There should be a slot for it. Super glue that. And then put the screw into this hole where the trigger will go. And then screw in the M4 screws through the top here. With this glued on, starting to take shape. Now, get your trigger, put it inside where it's supposed to be, and you'll see that there's a small hole. Cut a piece of filament and thread it through. Once you got the filament in, check if to see if your trigger works, and check if the catch is lifting up and down, all the way up. Okay, next step, grab your plunger and your spring. First, put in your spring to make sure it goes around your rainbow housing. And then put your plunger in. Also, grease your O-ring. And then push it all the way down and make sure it catches. And leave it primed. So now we're going to move on to the barrel. We'll put the stock on last. So first, grab your magazine priming handle and your catch. Grab a random dart head, put it into the magazine catch. Uh, once, once you do, once it's all the way in, this isn't it. Put these two together via filament pin. It should be really smooth. The start head acts like a spring, so we don't have to use another one. And if you want, you could test a Talon magazine. This does shoot half darts if you didn't know. Okay, so next up, grab your smaller PV, half inch PVC. Not the eight inch one, but the 160 millimeter one. Grab six inches of nine and sixteenth brass and tape. So you'll have to put this nine and sixteenth brass in here and secure it with tape. So to do that, first you gotta wrap your brass and wrap your brass with tape so it is tight enough that it'll stay in here. Just have it be flush on one side only, just like that. And then there should be a small uh, gap of PVC. Okay, here is my wrapped brass, 9 and 16th brass. I did two layers around, overlapping like a tennis grip. So put it in your 160 millimeter PVC, which should be smaller than the other half inch PVC. So put it in. Make sure it's tight, you might have to bang it, and then try to have it flush with the, the PVC, so. I just hammered it in, it's flush. So now, next step, grab your 17 by 32 PVC and wrap it just a smidges of tape. Okay, here it is, this is all I need because these two PVC makes it airtight. So all you wanna do Go to this side, not this one. This one is where the half inch PVC and brass are uh, aligned. But here, where there's like a small gap, put the 17 by 32 PVC carefully so the tape goes in with it. It might be a bit finicky, but uh, yeah, just try to get it in there. And then just have it so it is flush with the 9 and 16th brass. So pretend that this is the 1732 brass and this is the 9 and 16 brass. You just want it to be aligned together, like flush, you know? So I'm gonna just squeeze it in. There we go. So you can see my tape slip, but part of it made it in there and they're together. But they're not crossing in one another. They're just flush together. You'll see why. Okay. So next, grab your blocker with your O-ring identical to the plunger. 
and you'll need to super glue this together like that. The 1732 brass will be where the barrel is. This is the bottom. Grab your long barrel, put this through halfway only, your magazine priming handle, put that in here. This is, this is hard. Okay, like that. And then you'll have to put super glue here and then push this all the way in so it's flush with the magazine priming handle. So put your hand here so this doesn't go up all the way and then push with the other hand as it dries. If you're using super glue, it shouldn't take long. This is what you should have. Almost done now. Grab your last piece of brass and your clamp. And now put this barely inside so it barely comes out at this end. And also put some square nuts in here. So once you have the brass barely, in, barely inside and everything should be about dry, grease this up, grab your gun. Remember, it should still be primed. Put the o-ring in like this and align these two holes and push it in together like that. So the holes should be here, but we're not going to secure them just yet. Push, push your priming handle all the way down. You shouldn't feel any resistance because it's primed. And then finally, see this brass? You could use clamps. Clamp it right here and on top of the brass and slowly ratchet it down. But in my case, mine is a bit loose, but it's still pretty firm. You want to push this brass down as much as you can right before it enters the magazine well. Just right before it. Here's the brass right before the magazine well, just like that. So when you prime it, the magazine in here, uh, the dart will come up and then as you push it forward, this brass will remain stationary and push the dart. So let's secure the brass and then now screw this on. With uh, your M3 by 10 millimeter uh, screws. So once you got that, you might not need glue, you might do, but I need to glue this. Then we'll attach um, this part. It should snap on like that, a wrong way, like that, and glue that, but make sure it aligns with the crosshairs or iron sights. And then last but not least, super glue this into that, grab the stock and glue it into. That's it.